graphics. So graphics are just visual presentations, as you can see. Um, they're visual presentations on a surface, such as a computer screen. So examples are photographs, drawings, um, all these GIFs that we have, uh, uh, designs, maps, engineering drawings, and etc. Graphics often combine text and illustration. So they are pictures and films created using computers. So, and the usual term that refers to this is computer-generated image data, which is created with the help of a specialized graphical hardware and software. So I'm going to talk about, um, with you about graphic images. There are two types. There are vector and bitmap. So firstly, we're going to talk about vector images. Vector images path have a path with a start and an end, which are created through various commands and mathematical statements, and which create shapes and lines. Since since vector graphics do not use specific number of dots like pixels, it can be scaled larger and smaller without image losing image quality, as seen here. Vector graphics are perfect for logos, business cards, and animations, because it does not lose its sharpness or detail. This software does not use too much space compared to bitmap images, because it will have only the coordinates and the width and height of the image. As for the bitmap, it will store the amount of pixels within, pic within a picture or illustration. Programs such as Adobe Illustrator and um, Animator use vector-based tools. Now to bitmap. Bitmap is comprised of different squares called pixels. These pixels are placed in rows and columns, and the pixels are given a value. They are either filled in with color or left blank. This equals in creating an image. These dots can be filled with color information, such as the intensity of the color and, of course, the color. The more varying color information for each pixel create, uh, com create a complex image. When viewed from afar, it creates an overall image, but when zoomed in closely, pixels can be seen, many as seen here. Many applications use this graphic format, such as Adobe Photoshop, Paint to Sci, GIMP, industry, and Industries use this format for creating illustrations and professional photography, which they either may use to post on the internet or print out. Oh, whoops. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison of vector and bitmap images. First viewed from 100%, they are both clear images, but when zoomed at 300%, the difference can be clearly seen. Now we will look at resolution. So basically, this refers to the number of pixels in an image. It also can refer to the height and width and total number of pixels within an image. So how does re image resolution affect the image size? Well, cameras have a fixed amount of meg megapixels, which, are, which is one million pixels, which can pick up it and transfer analog data into digital. So basically, the more megapixels the camera can take, the larger the maximum size of the image that can be produced. Industries that use photography have to consider resolution as this will affect the photo size and picture's quality, and thus the product they are producing. This table shows um, examples of, of image resolution and what size it would be printed out. This is really important for industries to know because if they didn't, then they would have printed images with size they may not want for their product, or the quality of the image that is printed is pixelated or, or not of high quality. The same thing applies to electronic screens. Phones, computers, and TVs all have a set resolution, so that means images will either feel part of the screen or be too big depending on the image's resolution. That is why it's important for industries that advertise their product or use graphic content online to understand image resolution. They have to consider factors such as what type of audience they're aiming for and then what devices would they use to see advertisement or content. How does image resolution affect the color depth of an image? As I said before, each pixel contains the information of color they are. Color resolution or depth is the ability to measure how intense the three primary colors are expressed. The more variations of color, the more realistic the image becomes. The image on the right only has two colors, while the image, I mean on the left, while the image on the right has more variating colors, which makes it more realistic. Cameras and 
Cameras and scanner are examples of tech that can be used to scan and capture color from the real world into digital. These tech differentiates the different colors and shades into pixels. Programs such as Adobe Photoshop and GIMP and Paint Manipulate Pixels are able to add and change pixels color information, thus change the color depthness. Knowing color depth is important for magazines and photography and graphic illustrating industries because it will help or even improve the qualities of images and illustrations. Resolution in binary digits. Binary are the smallest possible digits that can be possibly conveyed on the computer. Binary digits have two possible values, one which is on and zero which is off. These are placed in, in a sequence. When a bit is added into the sequence, the number of possible outcomes double. Cameras convert analog into digital information. This is done through bits. Bits in a camera are used to refer to the number of possible tonal values the camera can capture. The more bits a camera can capture, the more smooth the gradients and deep shadows will be. However, file size will not change. 12-bit ADC will be uh, able to capture 4,095 tones, while 14 bits can capture 16,384 tones. They are exactly the same size, like a bread, but it's just that the 14 bits has more slices of bread. Here are some bit sizes. 8 bits, this is, this 256 tonal values are available. It is a smaller size, however, has a high chance of posterization. 16 bits has 6,055, 6, 536 tonal values available. It is a much larger file, however, it reduces chances of posterization. Um, 24 bits has 16.7 million possible tonal values available. It is a really big file, however, this image will have of high quality. So basically, the higher the bits, more space needed, but the work and the work computer has, but visually appealing graphics. This is important for photography graphic artists and publishing industries to understand, as they will have to consider the technology and equipment they are using. For example, does the computer that is used for editing or creating illustration have a lot of storage if they want to create a high resolution illustration? Image enhancements such as filtering. Filtering is one of the techniques used for image enhancement to filtering out noise to emphasize the low, high, or directional spatial frequency components. An example of this is a corsage on an arm, and then filter is black and white. Special effects. Image effects are used as a way to change image to add an artistic look, make test textured patterns or produce an enhanced real world view. For example, the passage again, and then made it as a glitch. Anti-aliasing. Anti-aliasing is a process which attempts to minimize the appearance of aliased diagonal edges. For example, same image, and then we've blurred it out, as you can see. File formats. TIFF or Tagged Image File Format, abbreviated as TIFF or TIF, is a computer file format for storing faster graphic images, popular among graphic artists, the publishing industry, and photographers. The format was created by Aldus Corporation for use in desktop publishing. BMP, also known as Bitmap Image File, or Device Independent Bitmap File Format, or simply a bitmap, is a fa faster graphics image file format used to store bitmap digital images independently of the displayed device, especially on mic Microsoft Windows and OS2 operating systems. Abbreviation for PCX is Picture Exchange Format, and then PICT is Macintosh Picture. JPEG compressed Compression is used in a number of image file formats. JPEG or EXIF is the most common image format used by digital cameras and other photographic image capture, capture devices, along with JPEG or JFIF. It is the most common format for storing transmitting photographic images on the World Wide Web. 
GIF is a lossless format for image files that supports, supports both animated and static images. PNG, or Portable Network Graphics, is a faster graphics file format that supports lossless data compression. Mm -hmm. PNG was created as an improved, non-patent replacement for graphics interchange format and is the most widely used lossless image compression format on the internet. Some examples of these file formats are TIFF, BMP, couldn't find one for picture exchange format on Macintosh picture, but here's one for JPEG. GIF and PNG. So, so what does it mean to import images? So import means to bring a file from a different program into the image into the one that you're using, and export means the opposite, which means to save a file in a way that a different program can use it. So what is clipart? Clipart is a collection of pictures or images that can be imported into a document or another program. The images may be either raster graphics or vector graphics. Clipart is typically organized into categories such as people, objects, nature, etc., according to and according to which topics you can find which is especially helpful when browsing through thousands of images. Screen capture. Screen capture refers to our ability to take a picture or record the screen of the device we're using, most often a computer or a phone, as you can see there. <laughs> a screen capture may be a still shot image which capture part, part of or all of your screen, and it can be a video in which you're able to record your screen as you navigate and narrate. How does a scanner work? Yeah. So th the image to be scanned is placed on top of the scanner's glass, glass plate. Then the computer sends the instructions to the logic board about how far the mo motor is to run and how fast. The logic board um, instructions place the scanning into an appropriate position to begin the scanning. So you can see that it starts from there, like from there. <laughs> As the scanning unit moves across the image, moves across the image, a light source shines on the image. This light strikes the image, reflects it, and is then reflected by a series of mirrors to the scanner lens. The light passes through the scanner lens and reaches the CCD sensors. Then the information is stored in the computer as an electronic file made up of pixels. There's also a comparison between black and white scanners. So black and white scanners only have one light source and color scanners have three. So they're one for each primary color, so red, green, and blue. Color scanning can be achieved by a one-pass scanner or a three-pass. And one, a one-pass scanner scans the image once and records all the three colors at the same time, while a three-pass scanner makes three passes over the image and records it one each time. These are all input devices, so graphics tablet. And that's one of their famous brands. Um, so what is an input device? An input device con is consisting of a flat pressure sensitive pad, which, user, which the user draws on or points at a with the special stylus to guide a pointer displayed on the screen. So a graphics tablet can be used like a large marker board to take notes or to create animation or create images. They can also be used by individuals as drawing surfaces to create drawings, paintings, and to edit images. The output is almost close to handmade sketches and drawings. How does the tablet work? So the tablet works by plugging into a computer via a USB port. And a stylus is similarly, similarly attached to the tablet. So when a user draws a line with the stylus, the drawing does not show up on the tablet. Instead, it shows up on the computer. So, and the pen, the pen may, ba may be battery powered or may have a cord. When a user draws a line using the stylus, the coil circuit transfers the signals to the main circuit inside the stylus. So that's how it transfers from what you're drawing in to the computer. And the data signal is generated by the stylus. The horizontal and vertical wires of the tablet op operate as, much as both transmitting and receiving coils. The tablet generates an electro electromagnetic signal, which is received by a circuit in the stylus. 
By using electromagnetic signals, the tablet is able to transfer the line to the computer screen or display being used. There are various different types of stylus and their effects and their sizes. So these tablets come with different levels of sensitivity to pressure applied on the surface by the digital pen or stylus. So the applied pressure on the drawing surface of the graphics ta tablet gives a mark or lines its thickness. So for example, if you press hard on your stylus, it's going to be a darker line, like a thicker line. Or if you press lighter, it's going to be a lighter and thinner line. Um, there are various different sizes as well. So the, um, the, these graphics tablets come in various sizes, with the smallest being 7.6 centimeters by 12.8 inches, and the larger tablets having more than these dimensions. So, and the price of a Wacom pen and a tablet varies with the size. So if you get a bigger size, you may get like a variety of pens and it depends on, yeah. So cameras. So the camera is a box that controls the amount of light which reaches a light sensitive surface inside. It's either film, a digital sensor or another surface. The original camera did not have a glass lens, though today we can, say that we can see that most cameras include a light box, a glass lens, and a surface that captures each light. There are, ver there are various different types of cameras, which include digital SLR, compact, mirrorless, action, 360, and a film camera. This is the evolution of the camera. So the differences between still camera and video cameras, there are many differences such as lens, sizes, um, what it captures, video quality and stuff. So video quality, through some digital cameras, though some digital cameras are offering 720p video recording, very few compact can match the higher quality. Audio quality. Many camcorders offer the ability to connect an external microphone to the, camera, to the camcorder to record audio, resulting in a much higher quality audio experience. Camcorders can also often record in stereo sounds, whereas digital cameras, however, typically do not offer the same option. Lenses. Digital cameras and camcorders take entirely different type of lenses. A camcorder lens will typically offer a far more robust zoom, giving you a greater magnification whereas in a DSLR, like, it's limited. Storage capacity as well. Most digital cameras save both video and photos onto memory cards. Those memory cards will have a maximum storage capacity of a few GB, which is gigabytes, which is only enough to hold a small amount of video and photos. On the other hand, a hard drive digital camcorder can have a built-in hard drive of 160 plus GB. So that's a lot in, in comparison to normal cameras that we use. Image libraries. An image library stores many image files typed securely and efficiently. An image library improves privacy and safety while increasing, increasing the volume of import images uses, uses control. It crops, watermarks, and resizes images while maintaining their quality standards. It's a business solution that improves connectivity between teams and externals by providing a central location for media. Stock photography. Stock photography is ex existing photos that are already created and they're made available by a license which you have to pay for. That, uh, and that fee go to the artist that produced them and the agency that's managing them. Object layering. So in, uh, we can see that um, we use object layering in uh, most common like softwares like Photoshop, InDesign. So we just layer them and um, we can sometimes have pictures at the bottom or text and this varies. Image information. Through the next few slides, I'll be talking about a few techniques used you on images such as stretching, skewing, rotating, color adjustments, and the canvas size and how it affects the image. I'll be using this example throughout most of it. Transforming an image. For a stretching image, there are a few ways to do it. 
It is a manipulation technique. The image is enlarged at a certain side to fit a scale that the, of the user's choosing. The image will be stretched usually will be in, the image will usually be enlarged by one of the sides, either making it taller or make it wider to suit the user's choice. Skewing the image, however, is choosing one or two of the diagonal sides and choosing to enlarge that side so that the image is at a different angle, such as the cat now looking like it is more upwards than it is downwards because the image is tilted that way. Then there's also the choice of doing one angle in which gives it a different effect. Rotating an image. Rotating an image is usually done at a 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 240 degrees, or a 360 but usually the 360 isn't used much. It does not alter the image too much. It is simply what the angle we see it as. Color adjustment, however, is usually done by an option on a more advanced art program, such as Photoshop, Paint Tool Sci, and InDesign. We see the command, which is usually Control U or Command U, and you'll get the three choices, saturation, light and dark, and the color. Through, on this image, I changed the color to be purple, and I had made the image darker by changing the color and the lightness to make that. File size. File sizes change the image and can fit many different areas, such as the quality of an image. As on the top, we can see that the file is not big. It is in pixels and is clearly not done very artistically. It is only using one kilobyte of the files and is only 110 by 53, which is not big, compared to the second example, which is 749 kilobytes and is 1,000 times 500 for the resolution. It clear, makes a clearer image while the other one is pixelated and is not highly recommended. <laughs> Thank you for listening.